having this skill to teach without books gives you flexibility and allows you to pivot and change when things happen. Student comes into a lesson they haven't practiced. Well, I've heard of teachers that force their student to sight read for 30 minutes. Oh, God. I mean, <laughs> I, I get the point of, you know, making a point, like you should do your work and remember your books. But honestly, like, okay, get them to do a sight read and then do something else because there's so many better things that we can do. So having these, these skills up your sleeve and one of these benefits of teaching in this more holistic way is that you can be flexible. You can just chop and change. And a kid wants to learn a pop song, you can do it. Kid wants to learn this. Kids uh, or an adult's doing something on YouTube, go with it. Student forgets their books, easy. New transfer student comes along, don't open a book, try this. Tim Topham here and welcome to the Topcast where we share all the best business and pedagogy ideas each week to help you thrive in your independent music teaching studio. In today's episode, we are starting a five-part series rebroadcasting our Hesitant to Hero Challenge, which we ran back in April 2021. And what we're going to be doing is unpacking one quick and easy idea that you can try in your studio to get off the page and enjoy being creative with your students without any hassles or worries or concerns. We're gonna make it super simple and really achievable for you. Each episode, there's gonna be a worksheet to download and some homework for you to do to get the most out of your learning. So we hope that you'll listen to it wherever you're working or driving or whatever you're doing, and then go home, grab the homework diary, the homework sheet, and then perhaps even listen to it again in front of your instrument and you'll be able to make the most um, of this series. Now, if you'd like to get the whole bundle of the next five weeks worth of handouts, all you need to do is enter your email over on our show notes page. It's over at topmusic.co slash episode 284. Now, if you're already a member, you'll be able to find this in the academy, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, note that these podcasts are obviously audio only. However, the original recordings were all full video. So, members, you guys can access the video recordings of all these live challenges in the membership. And if you're not a member, I'll let you know in a minute how you can get access to those as well. So, the original title of this series was The Hesitant to Hero, Hook Your Students with Our Top 5 No-Book Teaching Techniques. This was the five-day challenge and we ran it, as I said, back in April 2021. You may remember me promoting this in a superhero costume if you were on any of our social channels back at the time. And I ran this with our amazing um, head of marketing here at Top Music, uh, Sarah Buckley, and it was hugely popular. We had just so much fun. And what we really wanted to help teachers with were those students that perhaps were losing a little bit of interest or if you were struggling to re-inspire them after the summer break or you needed a quick dose of something new to use with the students, then what we did is give you proven methods that will have your students practicing heaps, growing in their own practice and playing motivation. They're gonna be building connections between core concepts and skills and that's going to lead to better things like sight reading and just reading more generally. Now, at the end of the five weeks, we're going to open up a discounted entry to our Top Music Pro membership. It's going to be the same offer that we gave people on our first challenge. So this is pretty cool. If you're not a member and you've been listening to the podcast for a while and you've been interested in Top Music Pro, then you will definitely be interested in this because what we'll be giving you in five weeks time, the details for how you can get access for just $19 for the first 30 days and then a very special discounted annual rate that will live on as long as you remain a member with us. Oh, and did I mention that doing all of this is totally free because it's on the podcast? (laughs) Here's what some of our original challenges said about this experience. Kara said, I just wanted to thank you again for this amazing past few days of learning. I got this message today from one of my students. Normally, I would kind of freak out and not know what to do, especially since her lesson is today. She wants to totally restructure everything we are doing. But after the last few days of this group, I feel like I have some tools to help her. Thank you. And Andrew said, hey, it's Andrew. Just wanted to take a moment to share how the five day challenge has and will continue to be a game changer as many teachers have shared. After one of the classes about adding chords to a simple tune, it inspired me to teach the students last Saturday and this week Mary had a little lamb as we did in one of the classes. Showing them how to play with C and G chords in the left hand, students were fine with the sounds. So we took it up another notch. We had them play the melody with A minor in measures 1, 2 and 4 and G in measure 3 and the same with the next line and the facial expressions changed with more excitement. 
The students were thrilled by the creepy and different, almost bizarre sounds coming from a common melody. I asked what if Mary had a zombie, in inverted commas, lamb. <laughs> so we played the song in C minor and the students couldn't believe the sounds coming from the melody. Some thought it was a bit psychotic or a bit disturbing. And the humour was great to explore with the students. After that, we walked up the four chords of C, D minor, E minor and F with one chord for each measure. I'm telling you, my students have been loving this simple idea, making music fun and enjoyable. They are very impressed and love a new way of playing a simple tune. So grateful to be part of this challenge. So many takeaways that will definitely change how I teach lessons. I'm so excited, thanks again. So each week you're gonna get a freebie worksheet to go over the main points of the session and then a little bit of homework as I mentioned a little bit earlier. The worksheets alone can be the basis of lots of fun and creativity and work as lesson plans in themselves. So make sure you do download them from our show notes page. That's over at topmusic.co slash episode 284. Now, the great news is that also on the show notes, we're going to be embedding the video of this lesson. So you can see me present and play live. I've got a view over the top of the piano and a view of me presenting. So this is the best way to engage with it if you're able to watch the video. So if you've got a student who comes to their future lessons with no books or have unexpectedly had to meet online at the last minute or they're just not in the same kind of mood as they normally are and you need to do something different or they've just had a big stressful exam week at school, no problem. What you're going to walk away with is the skills you need to be able to switch your lesson plan on the spot with confidence. I can't wait to share this with you. So let's just go over the next five weeks quickly and then we'll get into this first day. So today is all about chord quick wins. Next week, we're gonna be talking about lead sheets in lesson one. What? Yes, that's absolutely possible. Then in week three of this challenge, we're gonna be talking about repertoire remixing, one of my favorite things to do that adds creativity to the students' repertoire that they're already learning. Uh, week four is called Hook, Line and Sinker. We're going to talk about pop hooks and how to teach students simple things that they want to learn. And then the last one, we're going to pull it all together with a topic called Connections Through Chords. All right, so day one, let's kick things off. It's an easy off-page ideas using something called four chord composing. Now, if you've never done this before, you're going to love it, play along um, and after we've had a listen to this, I'm gonna play you some examples of some of the teachers who came on the first challenge and what they actually created with this. Remember that the download has got a space for you to fill in uh, some chord charts and things like that. And we've also included on our show notes page some of the example chord progressions that our teachers in the first challenge created. So go and check those out as well. All right, let's listen to today's recording and I'll come back at the end. It's all about some quick wins. We're gonna cover why I'm so passionate and why so many of you are passionate about this idea of teaching without the books, particularly at the start, but really all through a student's learning journey. So that's one thing we're going to talk about. Um, and then just giving you some activities that you can do to get started with this approach straight away. And this is what I'm giving you today is my best chord activity to do with any student of just about any age at any time with absolutely no books. Anyone can do it. Kids love it. Adults love it. Everyone loves it. Parents love it because their kids are like composing in one day. So that's what we're going to go into. Uh, that's called four chord composing. If you are a member and you've taken the four, my four chord composing course, which is part of our membership, it's a big sort of 10 module course taking you over 10 weeks of chord based teaching with no books, then I'll give you some skill, some upgrade tips and some ways to challenge you a little bit more. So even if that's not new to you, don't worry, you'll still get a lot out of today. So what I'll do is I might just chuck on my screen share because I want to start with what is probably my favorite graphic that explains what it is that we're so passionate about at Top Music. And that's this one here. I call it the holistic music teaching framework. Oh, and I think Sarah, Sarah, we've got in our homework or the handouts, we've got some examples here um, that you can actually fill in some of these blanks. And what this, I, I call it the tip of the iceberg teaching. So the tip of the iceberg teaching is the kind of teaching that we all br were brought up with 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, however long ago it was that you took lessons, you were probably taught that the most important things and really the only things to learn in a music lesson were reading, performing and interpreting music. That was really it. 
And yes, you would do, of course, to become a performer, you needed to do technique, you need to learn to sight read, all those things are included. But really the focus is on reading the music of really a very small number of composers and learning to interpret it according to probably your teacher's taste and probably not much more than that or interpreting it so that you could win a competition or uh, pass an exam um, and then performing that work in whatever way that happens. And of course, to me, that is just, it's the smallest tip of the iceberg really, because when you have a look below the iceberg, you can see all those things that we're missing and you can fill in a couple of the blanks that we've uh, neglected there. So composing, improvising, and improvising often leads to composing. Arranging, I love working on arrangements with students. I'm not sure how many uh, other teachers do this. It can be as simple as some of the things we're going to talk about in uh, one of our days coming up. I think it's maybe day five when we're looking at the chords in any piece of music and the way that you can also look at arranging and teaching kids about chords right from lesson one, which is what we're talking about tomorrow too. So arranging is huge. Playing by ear, it's a massive one. I would probably bet, don't know about you, Sarah, but I'd bet that a lot of you while you were learning the tip of the iceberg stuff, were some of you playing by ear yourself? I definitely was. I used to listen to my favorite songs on radio. I'm, I'm older than a lot of people think, I think. <laughs> and I would be ready with a blank cassette tape to hit record when my song came on the radio. So I never got the start. I never got the end because I'd always talk over it at the end. And then I would play that over and over and over again while I tried to learn to, how to read it or how to play it. And this is such an important skill. It, it, it provides experience for, for students in so many areas that they can build on. So pain by ear is huge. Accompanying, I, I know from speaking to teachers worldwide that the, their experience accompanying people, particularly in church and worship services and musical theatre and things like that, is one of the best ways to build a really strong foundation in reading and understanding music and being, being a better sight reader. Learning to notate, singing while you're playing. I love getting my students to do this and always surprises me how well so many of them sing when they don't think they can sing. I mean, some of them, some of them maybe not, <laughs> but, but nine times out of 10, some of them have completely blown me away. And these are boys going through puberty who are a little bit uncertain of their voice quite often. And they, you, you just encourage them and nudge them along or bribe them, whatever it takes, <laughs> get the parents to bribe them. And they are, they can be just, Oh, it's just a, such a great skill to be able to play and sing at the same time. Uh, reading lead sheets, which is kind of included in that. Jamming, having your students have the skills to be able to, if their friends say, oh, you know, Danny and, and Cindy are going to be putting a band together. Can you come and be our pianist? We want our students to go, yes, absolutely. What, what key are we playing in? Let's play some chords in that key. Anyone with perfect pitch, write in the chat if you know what chord I played. Um, we want them to be able to feel confident doing that and being able to play happy birthday when their grandma turns 90 at the nursing home and there's a piano in the corner and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Playing in bands and orchestras and exploring other instruments. I learned so much when I reluctantly accepted the invitation at school of my director of music to join the orchestra as a percussionist. I thought, what a, what a boring idea. Why would I want to go and play in an orchestra? But he said, Tim, you've got great rhythm, you know piano, so you can play all the tune percussion. And I had an absolute blast doing that. And I learned so much from doing it. So encouraging students to do that too. By the way, I'm not expecting you to start teaching students band instruments. I'm just saying all of this is the depth. This is the real iceberg um, that we should be helping our students with, in my opinion anyway. And that's why I'm so passionate about all of this off-page teaching um, approach. So I guess what I want to really confirm with all of you that this approach is truly a pedagogically sound approach. I'm not suggesting that we just play pop for the fun of it or play some chords for the fun of it. It's so much more than that because the depth you can get of understanding when students understand and unpack harmony is really, really important. And it just adds so much to their learning. What do you think, Sarah? 
Oh, I completely agree. And I'm just giving everyone a cue. This is for one of the blanks in your hand out there. So the benefits of holistic music, music teaching is, you know, that depth of understanding. They can mm. see music from so many different perspectives and right. then they can grasp it quicker. Exactly. Yeah. And I'd say another one would be that having this skill to teach without books gives you flexibility and allows you to pivot and change when things happen. Student comes into lesson they haven't practiced. Well, I've heard of teachers that force their student to sight read for 30 minutes. Oh God. I mean, <laughs> like I get the point of, you know, making a point, like you should do your work and remember your books, but honestly, like, okay, get them to do a sight read and then do something else. Cause there's so many better things that we can do. So having these, this, these skills up your sleeve and, one of these benefits of teaching in this more holistic way is that you can be flexible. You can just chop and change. And a kid wants to learn a pop song, you can do it. Kid wants to learn this. Kids uh, or an adult's doing something on YouTube, go with it. Um, student forgets their books, easy. New transfer student comes along. Don't open a book. Try this. Yeah, so so many if approaches. Have a bad day. Or something's oh, going yeah. on with the student. I yeah. mean, you know, sometimes when you walk in or they walk in and you're like, ooh. We got to do something different today. Right. You know what? We're going to leave all of that plan that I had. We're going to do something different because I can see that you're not in the right mindset to do that. And we don't want that to be, okay, let's try another Daniel McFarlane or Christopher Norton piece, although they're great composers. We want that to be, you know what? Let's, let's just, let's just make some cool music. And I can see you, maybe you're feeling a bit moody. Let's work in some A minor chords. By the way, did anyone pick? What key? Amanda did. Was. She did she? E flat, e flat major. Oh, I wish I had that skill. Is Amanda on Facebook? She's on Facebook, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe maybe Amanda could be one of the first recipients of something. One of Ooh, our little yeah. gifts. Can we do a can we do a wheel spin? <laughs> Look at this. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, well, I'm gonna say we're saving the Tanara one for lots of homework doing. So if we get that yes. one as a reason. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Topcast, you get the ultimate Topcast bundle. Oh, yes, fantastic. Uh, it was congratulations, Amanda. Wasn't it? Amanda. Yeah, congratulations, Amanda. We will be getting that to, through to you. That's actually, a, we're going to ship that to you, I think, aren't we? That's a physical product, I have a feeling. So there you go. Yeah. Love it. That's very cool. Um, okay. Now, third thing, and one more reason why this sort of holistic approach has so many benefits, uh, and that is with regard to interest, motivation, and retention. Students these days are craving more than just the books and the scales and the technique. We have to engage them in multiple modalities, multiple approaches, and being able to be confident as a teacher to approach something that the student wants to learn only has one impact and that's strengthens your rapport and connection with a student and makes them want to keep playing. And it also makes them want to do what you want to do more because they see that, Oh yeah, this teacher is kind of cool. They're letting me do a bit of what I want to do. So sure. I'll do that scale that I don't really want to play. Have you found that too, Sarah? Oh, huge. Absolutely. When my students are enjoying what they're just happened today. <laughs> yeah. So good. <laughs> That's right. So I think they're the big, they're the big three and um, hopefully you'll be able to write them down into the um, sheet here um, to keep track of how we're going. So I'm keeping an eye on the chat in Zoom. We haven't got any questions yet, which is great. By the way, if you're in Zoom, uh, you can, you're welcome to put a hand up with the hand up feature and I'll see that and we'll be able to cross to you do a live cross and um, get your question answered. So really happy to support you as much as I can. Hopefully all of that is making sense. So let's move on to the main kind of teaching point today. And that's to get you started with chords. What I'd love to see in the chat, either on Facebook or in Zoom is how many of you, or let, let's say we've got three options here. What is your chord teaching skill level? Advanced, intermediate or beginner? Can you just write one of those words in the chat for us? So I've got a bit of an just idea. The number will work. So one for advanced, two for intermediate, three for... Beginner. Perfect. Yeah. Then we'll watch for those numbers. And just a small aside, someone asked where you can find the handouts in the file section of the Facebook group. Thank you. Yeah. I think we emailed links to that too. Yeah. 
Good. So a couple of our Zoom members who are who may well be Top Music Pro members are uh, advanced. We've got an intermediate as well. How's things looking over on Facebook? No number. Oh, I see a one and two. Hillary says one. Jane says two. Fantastic. MJ right. says intermediate. Lori, intermediate. Heidi, two. Beautiful. So okay, cool. Intermediates. All right. And so, as I said before, for those of you who are advanced, we wanted to make sure that day one gave people who weren't so advanced the basics. So, uh, I, I'm going to be covering just some basic stuff, but I'm going to be challenging you to go a little bit further today if you've done this already. So, I'm going to go back to my screen share here and um, remind you of this, which I've got on my piano behind me over here. It's our circle of fifths. Now, when I was growing up, actually, you know, so give us a yes in the chat if when you were growing up, the only purpose for a circle of fifths was to learn your order of sharps or flats I or to yes. play scales. <laughs> yes. For theory class. It wasn't even in my lesson. Not yet. And, that, and that'd be in the theory class. Thanks, Michelle. I saw your hand up as well. That'd be in the theory class where you left the piano and you went and sat at a table and did your theory books, right? Yeah, I did yeah. the same thing as well. The circle of fifths was just a nightmare. It was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, horrible. So for those of you who aren't familiar with my four chord composing approach, that's what we're going to do right now. It's so easy and it's so much fun and it's so engaging for students. It also sends light bulbs off in their brain because finally they understand why pop songs sounds like they do. They understand why so many songs sound like each other and they suddenly realize they can make them themselves really easily. So, okay. So for our advanced people, uh, let's start with, uh, sorry, just before I ask that question on the slides, the thing that we want to realize, and if you're not familiar with this, this may be completely mind blowing news is that the chords are representative, uh, sorry, the chords are represented in groups around a tonic center. So if you're working in a key that's in C or a minor, then the chords on the left and the right are the six most common. All of those chords are the six most common chords found in that key which is why we get um, chord progressions that all sound so similar. So, for example, our... Our Let It Be kind of chord progression, 1564 uses C, F, G, A minor. And this is seen time and time again in pop songs. So, for another possible prize sp spin the wheel, first person to write down in the chat what one of the other most common chord progressions is in either C, so you can write the C in the letters of the chords or in numbers. So I just played a one, five, six, four progression. There is another one, two or three really common chord progressions. I wanna see you write it in the chat if you know what they are. So this is particularly for our more advanced people. Do we have any in the chat? Oh, I see some in Zoom. I'm checking on Facebook. Oh, Cindy said one, four, five, one. So let's play a one, four, five, one. So one, four, five, one. That's a nice, very, very simple chord progression, Cindy. That is true. It's actually not the one I was thinking of because there's one that a lot of us play and teach uh, that's an old 50s kind of song. That is the one I'm actually thinking of. Okay, ooh, I have ooh, some ooh, ooh. Yeah, go. What's that one? I've got, uh, well, one, five, six, four. I think that's the one that you said. Is that correct? I said one, five, six, four. Yep. Um, and then I see one, six, four, two, five, one. Well, that's what? Wow. Okay. Big one. Yeah. What, what was it? One, six, four, two, oh. five. Oh, yeah, yeah. Five. Nice one. Nice one. Yes. Uh, and we've got in... Um, Zoom from our VIPs, 1654, 1654, Robin, that's something. 1654, These are all beautiful chord progressions, by the way, can I just say? But I do see that Catherine Gardner has, has the one that I thought of in my head. Thank you, Catherine. She's up <laughs> dancing. The and this one. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Can you guys see, I'm screen sharing, but can you see my, I'll, I'll turn off screen share in a minute and you'll be able to see my keyboard a little bit better. One, six, four, five. Oh, no, Michelle got it too. Oh no, we're going to have to do two spins. Two spins. <laughs> Love it. 
All right, let's do let's do yeah. the quick spins and then we'll talk about how we can make these up. And I'm going to challenge our number one people, our advanced people, to do something even trickier. All right, let's go. This is for Catherine. <laughs> I'm using sheets. You probably have that already, Catherine, because you're in the... We're going to have to... Yep. <laughs> that is such a cool win spiel, spin wheel, by the way. Okay. Well, we got to have music sheets again, so I'm suggesting we move it by one. <laughs> Are you how about we give? How about we give Catherine a sheet music voucher? Okay. Yep. So she music plus she music voucher. Yay, she music plus she music voucher. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. Very, very welcome. And the other one was Michelle. You got this too. Michelle. Uh, Michelle let's spin for Michelle and then we'll move on. Okay. She music plus. Yeah, that's beautiful. Voucher. All right, two sheet music plus vouchers coming to you. I think they're either the ten dollars each. I think or twenty dollars. Twenty. Yeah, twenty bucks each. How about that? Michelle and was it Catherine? And Catherine, thank you very much, guys, for participating. That's great. All right, so now let's get on to uh, actually using this in composition with students. The great thing is that if we know that those six chords sound great together, we can make up chord progressions in any key that we know will work. So. Here's your challenge today, and you've got the sheet in front of you. So if you've got your handout, I want you to write down after the C three more chords from the six that is going to make up your chord progression and just write them on the sheet. Now, if you're an advanced person, I want you to go outside of the six for one of those chords. So choose out of the three that you're adding, choose two that are in the six and then go kind of weird for one of them. So find something on the other side of the circle and put it in. Now I can see that lots of you guys in Zoom anyway are at pianos. So if you're on mute, go and try and play your progression once you've written it. So with students, I always get them to do this theoretically first, write down the chord progression, then try to play it. There's obviously it's great to do things by ear as well, but in this case, this is how I started. So for example, let's say your student I've put in the screen has created this chord progression and they've got C, F, D minor and G. And we always finish back on the tonic first, the first chord. What we do then is get the student to play that in some kind of rhythm. So choose either three, th three, four or four, four and get them to play it holding the left hand down while repeating the right hand chords. So it sounds something like this. I'll do it in, in triple time just for the fun of it. One, two. Now, for a student playing this kind of chord progression for the first time, they're not going to be able to do it nearly as well as that. They're not going to use inversions, which you may have heard or seen me do. They'll be in root position. They'll be moving around. It'll, be, it'll take a little bit of time to understand how this works. But the wonderful thing is that they'll suddenly realize that they've made their own composition. Bang, just done it straight away. And that's the most powerful thing, right? Yeah, I actually did this with my team group class last week. Yeah. And I mean, they're super quiet, but then I got to see them again this week one-on-one -on -one, and they're all like, oh, that was so cool. Can we do it again? <laughs> like they loved it. But yeah. of course they were too cool to say anything in a group. Now, for those of you who might have already done this with students, one of the things you may find is that they do something like this. They go C and then they go D minor and then they go E minor and then they go F and then they go back to C. <laughs> and it doesn't sound very good. So you can, it, there's nothing wrong with it, but there are better options out there. So getting them to jump around a bit more is great. The final thing I'll say, and the, one of the really useful parts of doing this exercise with students is that the chord, the last chord at the end that returns you to the tonic, those two chords together make up a cadence. Now, most of the time when students are learning about cadences, they're sitting in their theory book away from a piano. They don't really understand what that means. When they make chord progressions like this, and that last chord isn't an F or a G, making either a plagal or a perfect cadence. Hopefully I'm talking in terms people understand. Let me know if not. If, um, if the last chord isn't an F or a G, they won't have a chord progression that sounds quite so complete or finished. And this is a wonderful teaching point for you. And students can learn so much by doing this. 
That's not to say that they couldn't finish on D minor and go back to C, but it's not going to sound necessarily as good as G to C. So if I swap the last two chords around, this is what it would sound like. We go C to F to G to D minor and back to C. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And maybe that's the sound that they'd like. But if you do the chord progression written with a perfect cadence G to C, you get something that sounds a lot more complete. So that alone is a teaching point worth picking up, in my opinion, anyway. So how have we gone? Now, I would love to hear from any of our more advanced people if they would like to either play their chord progression with a chord that's a little bit outside the six or just hold up what they've done in front of the camera so we can see it. Have we got any, anyone game from our group? Or if you're over in Facebook, just pop in the comments your four chords that you chose. It doesn't matter how simple or how complex. We would love to hear some, and I can play a couple through. Okay, Denise says C, B flat, F, C. Oh, cool. Okay, let's try that out. Oh, how cool is that? That's really good. I like that. Very cool. Nice. nice. Oh, yeah. That's a great one. Denise, ripper chord progression. Like it. Anyone else game to show me theirs or even play theirs if they're at a piano? Would love to hear it. There's some really cool ones in the Facebook chat. Cool. Have I'm you got one more? Yeah, just give it, choose one more, Sarah. We've got C, A flat, B flat, G. Oh, okay. This is Lana. So moving from a C to an A flat, that's, um, that's quite, a, quite a jump. Let's try it out. Here we go. Yeah, that's, so this ending, A flat, B flat, C is really, that's like, a, that's a great, great way to end any chord progression. Moving directly from the C to the A flat. Yeah, I mean, it does work. Yeah, nice. Thank you for sharing. Really love it. This is exactly the kind of thing that we want you to do. We want you to explore with your students. So when you're doing with, with, with your students, and this is one of our homework tasks for this week, uh, or for today, I should say, start with, just C major or A minor. You can start with A minor and do the same progression and just do it uh, with those six chord chords. If you want to go outside the circle and do flats and things like that, don't do it at the start. <laughs> just keep things simple for a while, okay? Now, I just want to finish, wrap up today by sharing how I then can see this or how I see it working with, uh, with students. Are we sharing? There we go. Because what students will start to do is they'll be able to see chords in music that they're playing. Now, this is, I'm going to give you an example of just a few different lead sheets and we'll talk more about lead sheets tomorrow. But when they see chords in progressions like this, they'll suddenly start to understand this rule about the chords and relationships in the circle of fifths. So, for example, simple gifts, F, A minor, G minor, C. Now, this is in the key of F, uh, and we've introduced the, the chord of G minor, which is kind of cool. So I then go back to the circle of fifths and go, okay, well, how is G minor related to F? Is it in the six? And the answer is yes, it is. It's expected. It's completely predicted. And this works brilliantly for just about any pop song that a student wants to learn. Here's a jazz, a jazz um, chart uh, in one of those old real books. Now, this is a little bit unusual. We've got a CC. Let's just take the, let's get rid of all the seven. C, A, G, and we've got an E flat, kind of cool. And then an E minor, an A minor. So we've got, again, leaving aside the E flat chord, it's all follows the rule. Okay. So that's what the kind of connections that I love making with my students once they start understanding these chords. Um, so, so important. And that deepens their understanding in so many ways. Okay. So what are we getting people to do tonight, Sarah? So tonight you want to fill in all the blanks on your handout and definitely make sure you make, make your, your chord progression and play it through. 
There is a homework post on the Facebook group. So on that homework post, I want you to comment. I rocked it. And tell us what your chord progression is that you chose. And think about which students you might try this with this week in your teaching. And tell us how many you might try, like maybe three or four this week. And then um, I think that's all for day one. You know, we want to make it feel like a quick win. So yep. tell us you rocked it. Tell us what your progression is and think about who you're going to try it with. Yep, absolutely. Now, if you're not seeing a student between now and when we go live next, then this is your time to have some you time to work on some core progressions to give you the um, skills to do this. So if you're finding what we just did today easy, then as we said, you can start exploring chords that aren't in the six. Uh, and I saw a question from Paula in, uh, in the Facebook group. How do you choose chords outside the circle? Uh, there are some structures that you can use, but I don't want to complicate things too much. So for now, just pick some and play through them and, and see what happens. You'll find that the flat keys, so E flat, A flat, B flat, tend to work quite well in C major. Uh, and you can explore major and minor as well. So mix some of those around. If you're also finding the four chord progression easy, then try, you can also try an eight chord progression. And if you want another level of challenge, don't start in C major, start in another key and get used to working in a different key area. So there's all ways that our more advanced people can keep progressing with this. But ultimately, if you see a student between now and then, and you can spare five minutes or 10 minutes in a lesson, go and try this out. Uh, and extra points if you get permission from their parents or if they're an adult student to film them playing their progression and post it in the group. That's what we want to see. Absolutely. Fantastic. Okay. So preview of what's happening tomorrow, Sarah. So tomorrow we're talking about lead sheets in lesson one. And you might be thinking like, what? <laughs> lead sheets in lesson one? You got to be This kidding. is so exciting. So we're going to be talking about hearing the tonal center and things that you can do with beginners. And that was a big question that was in the Facebook group about what people were excited to know was how do we start with chords and out of the book with young beginners? So that's what we'll be discussing tomorrow. Yep. I can't wait. It's really it's you'll kind of, I think some of you will kind of go, Oh, why didn't I think of that? When we talk about what we can do tomorrow uh, with chords and, and real beginners who are just learning to read. So um, super excited about that. Uh, we're going to wrap up and turn off the Facebook live feed in just a moment. So we'll say goodbye to our Facebook live uh, people. If you're in the VIP zoom, then hang on the call. We'll go and grab a quick drink and then we'll come back and we'll have another 30 minutes or so to answer any other questions. We can have a bit of a jam session. We can um, answer, do whatever we need to to help you keep on moving um, along. So I think with that, is there anything else that I've forgotten? I think so. Just, um, just before we wrap up, in case you are wanting to join VIP and, and be on our call tomorrow, that's topmusic.co slash challenge VIP. Yeah, great. So if you yeah, if you'd like to upgrade and be in the call where you can actually see us and we can see you and you can get more involved, then uh, topmusic.co slash VIP. What was Challenge it? Ch VIP. Challenge VIP. Yep, come and join us. Uh, and as I said, if you're a Top Music Pro member, you've got free VIP. So come and join us inside that link. If you haven't got the link and you're watching the Facebook Live and you're like, I'm a Top Music Pro member, then just send us an email or leave a message in the Facebook group and we'll get you connected. All right. That was super fun. Um, Roll. Robin's just saying, where do I find the homework sheets? Robin, they are in the Facebook group. And now I know you didn't get the emails as well. So we'll make sure we get you the right emails, but they've also been emailed to you. And I think that's it. Thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed today. We'll sign off to the Facebook guys. If you're in Zoom, hang around. See you everyone. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's first day one of the Hesitant to Hero Improvising and Chord Teaching Challenge. It's so much fun and uh, here's what some of our participants said and here's how some of their music actually sounded. I wanted to share that with you. So, Marissa said, I rocked it. Thank you for sharing this quick chord activity. It's definitely going to help some students interact more with the circle of fifths. Sandy said, I rocked it. I'm going to try this with four new students. Today was great. Thank you. Very useful info on the circle of fifths. And uh, Cynthia, who said, uh, I've taught piano for about 30 years and I never knew about the little triangle thing, i.e. the piece of pizza, the, the chords next to each other on the circle of fifths that sound great together. When my teacher from 100 years ago showed me the circle of fifths, it made zero sense, Cynthia said. 
All right, before I sign off, I thought you might like to hear the results from other teachers who completed this challenge when we were doing it for the first time. So here are their day one homework results to inspire you. So Margaret shared music from two of her students. Let's check those out. And how about this audio from Angela who said, here is my late day one video. My new adult student was so inspired, she added words. I gave her the chords, C, F, G and A minor, but let her choose the order. I know we have moved on to day two, but I had to share this awesome response from day one. I also learned this student loves a challenge. Let's have a listen. And I had to share this from one of our members, MJ's male student, who not only created a chord progression, but wrote the lyrics and sung for the first time. Here's what she said. Four chords can really sound good, especially when your student sings his own lyrics. I could suggest he had a bass part. Um, I want to be careful about suggesting any more for this just now, though. Celebrating this achievement, he sang and played this to his music class. And it's the first time he's ever sang to anybody. Let's take a listen. All right, well, I hope you that's got you inspired. Go download the sheet. You've got seven days. Try this out. Let us know how it all goes. Next week on the podcast, we've got day two of the challenge. It's all about lead sheets in lesson one. You're not going to believe what you can do with beginner students to start teaching them about chords and harmony right from their first one hand pieces. I'm Tim Topham. You've been listening to the Topcast. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and I'll see you next time. For more information about this episode and to find out how to enhance your own teaching, visit topmusic.co. You'll find everything you need for your studio from lesson plans to cheat sheets, quick win teaching ideas and guides on how to build your teaching business. Plus, you'll be connected to a global community of the world's top music teachers. And when you're ready, join hundreds of other teachers around the world by becoming a Top Music Pro member and get access to all our bonus content and flagship courses. And don't forget to follow topmusic.co on social media and subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to it. That's all for today. We'll see you in the studio.